Welcome to Mostly True Stories with Dr. Juan Harrison, a series of feel-good faith-based short stories from a Texan's perspective. Now here's Dr. Juan Harrison with today's story. Please enjoy. Ever thought how a grandbaby changes everything? Most Friday nights, my wife and I call out to the country to offer a bribe of a free dinner somewhere if they'll just let us come babysit. I can't use that term bribe after January because my son will be a judge. There's no need for subtlety here. We want to come play with the critter that didn't exist a year ago outside her mommy's tummy. We watch her do sign language and listen to her new words. She has to be one of the smartest kids ever. Then I'm humbled after learning that Clay's friend has a daughter who already knows some Spanish at 15 months. Clay, we got a lot of work to do. I love the way that Gus, the guard dog, an all-around farm protector, steps between the grandbaby and us, as if he thinks that she's threatened. She's got her own secret service. The cat-mouse catcher and snake scarer offer defers to the child by ignoring an occasional grab from that little hand. I think I heard the mama cat say, hmm, my bad. Hate to tell her, but the kid thing only gets worse, especially if Emmy becomes a big sister. You better run for your life while you can. I try to compete for her attention, but Mama is winning hands down. Maybe I'll have a shot later when I can take her to the McDonald's playground and Kid Kingdom and fishing at the pond with her Barbie fishing pole. The grandbaby holds out her arms to Mama. I pretend not to be jealous. I know she's invested time in building up a relationship with her since birth. Today, we're in Oklahoma at a really neat petting zoo with tons of birds and snakes and goats and sheep and llamas and donkeys and fawns and grown deer and a myriad of other creatures. An employee there says that the menagerie changes daily as people drop off orphans and unwanted pets. Emmy took up with the goats and a pony. The little cow from India kept insisting that she feed her. A doe that has been raised there and released came back last night. She jumped the fence and delivered twins. Mama and twins are fine. Thank goodness she had been attending a deer yoga class to maintain her flexibility. This afternoon, Amy is sitting in the cold, clear brook full of small fish and crawdads. She keeps making sounds of delight, serving as words as the fish nibble at her and run for their lives. Her cries of protest after being pulled from the stream are quickly quelled by some kind of cheese puff or a snow pea. I knew she took after me. Back in the cabin, we're getting sleepy as she focuses on Peppa Pig, the English cartoon. I had no clue, but she loves her and has since birth. Mickey's Playhouse is a close second. What a great excuse to just sit with a baby in your lap and exercise no brain cells. At 18 months, grandson Shiloh sat behind us and spent most of his flight time to Hawaii watching a video game narrated by two silly English guys who were making a fortune. This all reminds me now how much we came to learn on Sesame Street all those years on PBS. She's asleep now. Mom and Daddy are out running across the Oklahoma hills, doing what young ones do on vacation, while the grand folks stand watch, baby monitor, and all. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. The kids get a chance for some great alone time, and we get to practice spoiling the baby. After all, practice makes perfect, and we all know Emmy does now far to go to reach perfection. All prejudice aside. This is Dr. Juan Harrison, and this has been a selection from my series, The Mostly True Stories of Dr. Juan Harrison. Find me on Facebook and my books on Amazon.com.